Okay, shall we start? Hi, my name is Rob Martinson, CTO at Inlight. I also manage Inlight's additive manufacturing business. And I'm here to uh, uh, present Dr. Woody from uh, the Technical University of Munich. And this talk will be uh, a collaboration uh, between Technical University of Munich, Relays, and Enlight to advance the productivity of powder fed fusion machines. So, Professor Woody. Yeah, thank you very much. The sound is better now. And please come closer to the screen and maybe not. Um, block the, the way that much. Um, you can come a little bit closer and um, yeah, thank Rob first of all for the kind introduction and welcome everybody to my talk today. The talk is about a project, a collaborative project between three company, uh, companies actually. So of course Enlight, it's the booth of Enlight. Um, and Optoprim and Rayleighs and the combination is quite unique because we combined the Enlight RFX laser system with a 4X scanner with a scanning system with a zoom axis so we can increase the spot size of this donut profile with this um, scanning system. And uh, I will talk today about the first results of this setup and I will explain why we set up this um, system and show some first in-process videos. So the title is Zooming the Donut, how can we further increase the processing speed in powder bed fusion of metals? So first of all the agenda, um, I will talk and explain to you why we set up this collaboration and what is our aim to um, yeah, to reach together, then I will explain how we did it and I will show the first results and sum up the presentation. So first of all, I think all of you are familiar with the process of powder bed fusion of metals using laser beams. And the state of the art is to use um, Gaussian beam profiles and if you use Gaussian beam profiles, high laser powers combined with scan speed may lead to process defects like um, overheating, powder denotation or balling effect and at the end we have a low process speed. So if we look um, on a so-called process window or process map, you can see that if you print the laser power um, on the y-axis on, and on the x-axis the scan speed that you have a specific process window where you reach good results which is more in this green area where your weld line has no defect and your component has no defect and if you increase the laser power you will reach a region, a re a region where you have the keyhole formation which is up there or you may have for high uh, scan speeds effects like balling which is schematically shown here or under melting which is at the bottom there. So our aim is to come with our process window in this direction and therefore we first of all have to increase the process speed and the laser power, power combined with a huger size of our beam. So the question is now how we reach that goal to get a huger spot and a huger spot size combined with another beam profile. So in the state of the art, it's quite well known that other beam profiles like donut profiles lead to a more stable process. This is already now known. And that's why we combine this AFX um, 1000 laser system from Enlight with a scanning system from Rayleigh's. The scanning system is called AM module next, next channel. It's also shown um, at the booth of Rayleigh's. And this scanning system is quite unique because we have an additional zoom axis where you can increase within your focus area the spot size. And you will create at the end a ring so you do not change the caustic of your beam profile. And this setup was built at the Technical University of Munich where I am. I'm the professor of laser-based additive manufacturing. That's why we are dealing with this topic. And you see this setup behind these two guys and this is our project team. So the team from Rayleigh's. Unfortunately, Enlight wasn't able to travel to Germany only for the picture, but um, um, Christian from Optoprint is also here if you have some questions regarding to this. 
So what we've combined is that we combined these uh, AFX um, laser system with seven different beam profiles and high modulation frequencies with the scanner from Laylace who has a zoom factor of two so we can increase the um, diameter of our beam profile with a factor of two. Um, and there is an additional optical or sensor module inc um, included, which means we can on access monitor and watch our process. And this um, leads us to our new setup where we can on the fly change the beam profile um, in, in the um, indices, so what kind of beam profile we create, and the beam size. We can furthermore have a temporal change of the energy input by using pulse exposure, and this means um, one size fits for all, doesn't it exist anymore, we will get some kind of receipt book for process parameter setups for powder bed fusion of metals. Now I will move on to the first results. The first result w were created with an other laser, uh, with another scanner system. So the first results I show here were created with another, with another scanning system. And first of all, we had a look at the different beam profiles we used for our investigations. We used the typical Gaussian beam, pro beam profile as reference setup. And then we use the different indices four, five, and six, where we see that the energy is moving from the middle of the spot to this outer ring. And the next result show first of all the process map. On the left hand side, we see the process map for a typical Gaussian beam profile where we have the laser power and the scan speed and the process window is quite small. And by using the indice number here, we can see that we can increase the process speed to a level of 1,500 uh, 1, and we can also work with higher laser powers as you can see here. So we get and create a future process window. And this is the same for the other, other indices we used. So um, in the indice number five and six, and you see that therefore um, we get a future process window and this will first of all lead to a process speed increase, of course. Um, on the next slide, so you see the um, results of the overlap. So we change not only the um, scan speed and laser power, but also the hatch distance, because we've seen that with the ring mode, we get a diameter of this ring around 200 microns, and therefore we change the hatch distance and the laser power and said, okay, we need an overlap between our two passes of 20%. And what you can see is that you reach these 20%, which has the hatch distances between 170 and uh, 300, yeah, around 300 microns. So the um, number of scan passes we need to create uh, the same area is also lower, which means, uh, again, to increase the process speed. So furthermore, we analyzed the cross-section um, the cross section area we created. So the cross-section we melt within one second, which means the volume we melt within one second with the different beam profiles. Again, the Gaussian beam profile and the different indices, the different ring profiles. And what we can see, unfortunately, the <laughs> there is a new publication which were already submitted. Um, and I would like to point out, but what we can see is that the molten volume for di this different beam profiles compared to the standard Gaussian beam profile is higher, which means you melt a higher amount of material in one time unit. And this is also an increase of process speed. But this was only with this, without the zooming axis. Now I will show the results uh, of the beam profile if you zoom the laser, uh, the, the beam um, of this laser system and you see the different um, uh, caustic measurements of these different beam profiles, first of all here, so the typical Gaussian beam profile in the standard configuration and with the zoom factor of two, um, where you can see, that, of course, that you increase the diameter of your spot to a level of 150 without any defocusing. So the caustic stays the same with this zoom axis. 
And there we see the results for the different indices, so indice 1, um, 2, and 3. At the moment, um, we haven't used this indices yet, but we, we will use it for the future, for example, for materials which are not that easy to weld to get some kind of preheating with this outer ring, but not melting of the material with the outer ring. But the first investigations were with the beam profiles 4, 5, and 6, what you can see here. And what is amazing is that you can change the diameter of this ring from around 200 to a level of 400 microns. So the spot size is now with this um, ring mode laser system around 400 microns. And the first process results are shown on videos or are shown first of all here on single weld lines. Um, at the top you see the Gaussian beam profile in the setup, so we changed um, the zoom factor from 1 to a zoom factor of 2, where we have a diameter of 150 microns, and with a specific laser power and stand speed, you um, see that there is on a single weld line a balling effect and not a really stable process. Um, and with the configuration of the ring mode laser, where we have, first of all, in the, without zooming, a diameter of 200 and change this diameter of the ring profile to 400. And what you can see is on single weld line that you have a homogeneous weld track. And again, remember that also the cross section, the melted cross section is changing, which leads to an increase of the process speed. Um, this is my favorite slide of this presentation today. We will see um, in a few seconds at in the first video it's a typical Gaussian profile without the zoom factor, so this is this one. In the second video it's an on-axis monitoring, so an on-axis camera system where you directly see the interaction of the um, of the metal material with the laser beam. On the second video, you will see the Gaussian beam profile with a zoom factor of two, so around 150 microns. And at the bottom, you will see the ring mode number six without zooming on this video and with zooming on this video. So the size of the spot here is around 400 microns. Um, so, first of all, what you can see is that the melt pool is not that stable, um, especially also for the Gaussian pro profile in the zoom of two, so where we have 150 microns, you see some spatter formation here, and not a really um, homogeneous weld line, what we have already seen before. And now, please have a look on the second video, again, where we have the standard ring here and the zoom, zoomed ring with a factor two here. And especially, oh. Ah. Doesn't like me anymore. Ah, now it works. So especially this video shows that the, um, Mad pool dynamic is really smooth. You don't have a huge um, dynamic within the melt pool. And what you can see if you analyze this uh, cross section, that you have a really homogeneous cross section and a huge area you melt at the end. And you have a size of this weld pool of 400 microns with these higher scan speed combined with a higher laser power will lead to an increase of our productivity at, at the end. What is at the moment ongoing are experiments on components, how to increase the density and whether we get a density of 90.9% per, uh, 90 for example. But to sum up the presentation, the key takeaways are that ring-shaped beam profiles lead, first of all, to an extension of the process window. So we come from a process window with a Gaussian beam profile, which is in this direction. And with the donut profile, we can increase the cross-section. And with the increase of the spot diameter of this ring mold, we can further increase our productivity level. And what you can see additionally, I haven't shown um, this yet, that you can also tailor the microstructure. So this is a typical microstructure of a stainless steel material exposed with a Gaussian beam profile where you can see these grains growing from this welded line. And due to the change of the shape of the beam profile, 
while you change the microstructure. And this means you can change the size and the shape of your beam profile in every volumetric element on your component. So you can tailor your microstructure at the end on every volumetric, component, uh, volumetric element of your component. So this is something we would like to further investigate in the future. And now if you have some questions, this is the project team from the Railays. Also Wolfgang Lehmann is here somewhere in the back, yeah. And um, Mark, uh, Rob Martinson from Enlight, if you have some questions, ask him. I'm the representative from the Technical University of Munich here, here and Otto Brun Christian is also there. So thank you for your attention, and now, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. That's great. That's great, great. Any questions for Professor Woody? <laughs> Please. So, uh, well, one correction. So, you mentioned the laser can modulate at 50 kilohertz. Yes. Does a correction can actually go 100 kilohertz? Okay. But you also didn't show any results from that. Where is that going? To yeah, be? yeah. We will. We will show some. So, this is also something which is ongoing at the moment because to change. Um, so, um, what was your name again? Um, yeah, Dorf asked me about the modulation rate and whether we have some investigations on pulse exposure on modulating the beam. So this is something we did parallel, but only for the Gaussian profile at the moment, because the degrees of freedom are huge. So we can change the size, the speed, the laser power, the hatch, everything in the ring profile itself. And in the future, our aim is also to use tailored and um, yeah, tailored scanning strategies also combined with this pulse exposure. Pulse exposure, for example, lead to lower anger hung on this. This is something we already investigated. Maybe you could comment on hatch spacing that you've explored here. Um, any hatch spacing? Uh, uh. So Rob, <laughs> Rob asked about the hatch spacing. I showed some results there. So. The head spacing, of course, if you have a huge beam, then the distance between two um, weld passes could be higher and this will further increase the process speed. But this is also something we have to investigate if you change the size and the beam profile, what is the perfect hatching yeah. strategy. Okay. Further questions? Yes? Mechanical investigations already? Yeah, that's then. Thank you for the question. The question was if we performed some mechanical investigations. This is also something we are, we are actually doing. Um, because the first step is with this degrees of freedom, first of all, we have to investigate what is the perfect hatching strategy, um, how depth and uh, how is the weld pool depth and width and things like this. And now we are moving on to our volumetric parts where we do then mechanical testing. Further questions? Great. Well, thank you. Yeah, thanks for being here.